Okay, NBA stuff. I want to say a couple things. Some things that I have noticed recently that, you know, I feel a particular way about. Um, tonight, you know, we had a bunch of games, but I'm not just going to talk about those, just st stuff that's happened since basically my last video. Um, Dwight Howard. We'll start in the East. Let's go with Orlando. Dwight Howard, he's developing an offensive game, and I really like it. I watched him play against, you know, L.A. Um, I think I saw him against... Um, Miami in a recent game he's coming along it's finally got to him he's hitting little jumpers he's hit developed some p low post moves it, it's starting to come to him I even think his free throw shootings better and I think this is a very exciting development simply because it, it, it's a part of his game that he has to get if he wants to be an alpha dog and it really looked like he wasn't going to get it, but I think he's getting it now. Orlando's obviously a much more dangerous team now that they have Howard potentially dependably putting up 25 points. So I I love where that's going. That's one thing I noticed with them, and it makes me think that once again, maybe I think they will be at, in the um, conference finals. If they get there, that kind of makes me think that, you know, another upset of Cleveland is possible because it adds a whole dimension, new dimension to everything, and I really like what I've been seeing from him. Uh, Atlanta. I've had a funny feeling about them. And, you know, the other night they dropped that close game to the Knicks. They, it seems like every time people are ready to completely buy themselves into Atlanta, they lose a game, like, to the Knicks, to the, you know, to the bottom feeders of the league. Like, they don't c completely take them seriously. And I've been, you know, looking at them a little bit, trying to figure out what it was. And GMs around the league, you're not watching this, but if you were, you should listen to me. Do not give Joe Johnson a max deal. He's going to get one. It's going to happen. Somebody's going to give him the max. It's probably not going to be Atlanta. It's probably going to be New York. But he is not worth the max. I mean, they need him to be a franchise player because he's more or less the best player on the team. But he's really not there. He's about what Michael Finley was in his prime. Remember when Michael Finley was in Dallas? He made a couple of all-star games. Was a really good player for them. That's pretty much what Joe Johnson is. Don't give him the max. He's a good scorer, pretty good at ball handles, decent rebounder, he's big. He brings a lot of things to the table, but he is not a max player. And that's the thing that Atlanta doesn't have. I mean, they got they got a good number two with Josh Smith, who brings a lot to the table. Um, you know, they got Al Horford, who's a double-double guy. Marvin Williams is a disappointment still, but he plays and produces a little bit. Bibby's good veteran. Jamal Crawford's great off the bench. That's the makings of an elite team. I don't think they're there yet, and I'm looking at Joe Johnson not being a full franchise player for that reason. That's why I don't think they're going to make it to the conference finals. Oh, I got to take a look at the uh, wild card positioning, I mean the lower seeds in the um, Eastern Conference, got my sports terminology mixed up there, but we basically, it's down to five teams, four spots, Milwaukee, Toronto, Charlotte, Miami, and Chicago. Right now, Chicago would be out, I think it's going to stay that way, Chicago is going to have a brutal schedule coming down the stretch. They play one more road game than home game, which, you know, that's not that big a deal, they're a game back of Miami and Charlotte. But I looked at their schedule. It is brutal. The only other team I think that could fall out instead of Chicago would be Miami because I, I, I just can't stand that team. I hate watching them. I hate the way they play. I hate the way they're wasting Dwayne Wade. I, I hate everything about those guys. And the way they play, they it wouldn't surprise me if they fell out. But I think the Chicago, their schedule is going to screw them. Um, you know, we got Milwaukee in the five spot, which is amazing. But imagine how good they would be if Brandon Jennings wasn't sucking so horribly ever since the, really, second month of the season. If Brandon Jennings 
gets hot in the playoffs, which is totally possible because he was hot to start the season and hasn't been hot since, think about what this team could do against Atlanta or Boston. They could absolutely win. And then you got, um, looking at Toronto, okay, I underestimated them a little bit. They're not as bad defensively as I thought they would be, but they are still pretty bad. They give up over 105 points a game. They actually give up more points than they score, which is crazy given that they do have that winning record and a six seed. But right now, they're matched up with Boston. Don't That's a terrible matchup for Toronto. I, I think Boston isn't any good this year, but if Toronto plays Boston in the first round, I think Boston's going to slaughter them. It's just a terrible matchup. Uh, Calderon and Jared Jack against Rondo, I, I just think that's going to be a mess. So I'm putting that out there. Um, Dallas. You know how I know they're there now? They're really there. Lately, in my opinion, they've been playing like crap. And they've still won every game. That's how I know they're there. They're ready to actually compete for the title. Like tonight against New Jersey, they sucked. They fell behind big. They looked like they were actually going to get blown out. No, Dirk played like crap, and they won. The other night against, I think it was Sacramento, they fell behind big. I think Haywood got hurt. I think Marion might have gotten hurt. They still won easily. Uh, something similar happened the other night against Mil um, Minnesota, where they blew a huge lead and still somehow won. So they're at the point now where they can play poorly by their standards, still win. So when they play well, they can beat anybody. So now I'm sold. I don't know if they're going to the finals, but I believe it can happen. And I definitely believe they're the, they're the second best team in the West. Um, Phoenix, Phoenix. A little bit of a resurgence with those guys. 40 and 25 now. They've won some games lately. They're seven back of L.A., in the sixth spot, they're tied with Oklahoma City. They're, um, I don't know specifically what happened there because, you know, early in the season they were shooting ridiculous percentages and of course that died down and it looked like they were actually going to fall out of the playoffs entirely. But um, we seem to have our eight playoff teams in the West. The Lakers, Mavericks, Nuggets, Jazz, those are obvious, and then the Thunder the um, Suns, the Spurs, and Blazers, because all those other teams that were competing, you know, Memphis, Houston, New Orleans, they've fallen to pieces. New Orleans is going to be in a six to seven game hole here soon, and I don't know if Chris Paul's ever going to be back this year, but if he does, he's not going to get back soon enough. Houston was just never that good. They were always talent-challenged. But um, they played hard. It, it's not going to be enough, though. And Memphis just... I'm not sure specifically what it was. I, I think they just weren't ready. They're just not ready yet. N nothing that they did wrong in particular. They're just not quite there yet. They're certainly talented enough. But regardless, I think we have our eight teams in the West. So, yeah, the Suns are definitely going to be there. I'd love to see them take on... You know, a team like Dallas, because they match up fairly well with a team like Dallas. Um, although, as of right now, San Antonio would be playing Dallas, which is always a fun matchup. Actually, all these matchups could be potentially very good. L.A. and Portland, that's a big rivalry. Dallas and San Antonio. Denver and Phoenix, you know, not a great matchup or anything, but it works. And Utah and Oklahoma City, I... I actually like that one quite a bit for a multitude of reasons that I won't get into here. But, you know, there's a lot to like over there, too. I don't have anything too much else specifically to say. But um, I watched the Spurs blow the game against the LeBron James-less Cavaliers the other night. And I, I didn't know what to say after that. That was really... There were two games this year that have really summed the Spurs up to me. Their game against Portland, where they had a 10-point lead in the fourth and blew it, and that game against Cleveland. I mean, Richard Jefferson is actually incompetent. He's just not bad or anything. Well, he's bad, but he's actually incompetent. It, it's bizarre. I, I can't believe he's allowed to be that bad and make that kind of money. It, it's insane. Um... 
and they just they have a hard time in close games it seems like can't remember how many close games they've won this year but every time I watch them it seems like they lose close games and you know Duncan doesn't slap up dominant numbers anymore quite like he used to I, I, it looks like it really is the end of the era so it, it's I still want to see the Dallas San Antonio matchup because it's the rivalry and I think it'll be fun but it's gonna be a little different all right I think that's all I really got to say right now, so see you guys maybe in a little more than a week.